Here I hold a regular, yet quite archaic photograph. But this isn't your typical photograph. This one is radioactive, due to the use of uranium used in the printing process. To understand the process, we need to jump back in history nearly 200 years. Joseph Nisifor Nips took the first photograph around 1826, the camera obscura. This device made it possible to freeze time on paper. Joseph set up his camera facing outside a window toward the courtyard with some outbuildings at his family's house. The camera had to take in light and expose the light sensitive material for around 8 hours before the image was ready. Once Joseph processed the photo, he made history with the first photograph. His assistant, Louis Daguerre, took the idea of photograph and delved deep into the science behind it, creating a process that is named after him, the geotype. This process type employed silver halides, significantly reducing the exposure time from hours to minutes, and the quality also increased explosively. Even though silver works, other metal salts were tried, including uranium. Uranium was popular due to its warm color it produced when the prints were developed. Also, at this time, uranium had few practical uses. Time to revisit the nuclear age of the 1800s with my uranotype attempt. A uranotype is a photographic method that uses uranium salts as the photosensitive material. The first step in making a uranotype is selecting the proper uranium salts. We need a salt that is photosensitive. For the salt to be photosensitive, it has to be able to be reduced by ultraviolet light. Two main uranium salts have this property, uranium nitrate and uranium acetate. For my attempt, I will use the uranium nitrate. When working with uranium salts, the heavy metal aspect of the material is far more dangerous than the radioactive parts. Gloves, respirators, and goggles are a must. The area you are working at also must be set up for radio work. Cleanability and not being able to contaminate a permanent work area is a must. Mostly all the work done must be done in a low light area or a dark room. If not, the light will ruin the paper by developing it too soon. We start by dissolving 4 grams of uranium nitrate in 16 milliliters of distilled water. This is our bulk sensitizing solution. The bulk solution can then be transferred to a vial or bottle. It stores well for later use. Just make sure that it's either in a brown bottle or a dark area. Next, we take around 2 milliliters of the solution and transfer it to a graduated cylinder. To the 2 milliliters, we add 8 drops of 1% potassium dichromate solution. The point of the dichromate is to boost the color range of the print. If no dichromate is added, there will be very little contrast. Add it to our paper. Printer paper will not work for this. It must be watercolored paper. Watercolored paper will hold the nitrate and won't fall apart when wet. Make sure to use a foam brush or a brush without a metal furl. The metal will react with the solution. The solution is brushed around. It is crucial to get an even coat. It might help to make a pencil outline to keep track of the area that needs coating. I found that a 2 ml solution is enough to cover 8.5 by 11 piece of paper quite easily.
Once coated, the paper is left to dry in a dark area. It needs around 15 minutes to dry, and this needs to be done naturally. Do not use a hair dryer to make things go faster. It'll throw uranium particles everywhere and cause contamination. While drying, let us get our negative ready. For uranium chemistry, it'll take 20 to 40 minutes to expose. This means we could do a regular camera exposure with a camera obscura, but uranium isn't all that sensitive, meaning the print won't work very well. A better method is contact printing. Contact printing is where the negative is laid on top of the sensitive paper, and a negative can be created quite easily and printed off. First, we choose our image. Then it is filtered to grayscale. After, a negative generator is used on the grayscale image, and our negative is made. We then mirror the image so that when it's printed, the contrast side contacts the paper that is sensitive. And then we print it off, and we print it how large we want it. Printing it on paper will yield not so good results. The opaque paper will diffuse the light, but we can get better results by printing on a transparent plastic. Once printed, we have our negative ready. With the negative ready and the sensitized paper dry, the next step is to expose the picture. We place the negative on top of the paper, and there are a few suitable methods for contacting these together. Sandwich method between two glass panes or a piece of glass and cardboard is a suitable method. Another is to run it through a laminator. All that we need now is to use some UV light. We can get outside and use the sun or we can use under a bright lamp. The sun is the best option for most. It is very bright and works well. If it's an overcast or winter time, it will take longer to expose these pictures. Set a 30 minute timer and we'll be back when it's ready. The negative image is backwards to what the final print will be. Dark areas will be light and light areas will be dark. When UV light strikes the uranium, a photoreduction reaction occurs and it gains two electrons, going from a plus two state to a plus four. This creates the image. The same process occurs in silver photography, although silver is a much more sensitive salt. After 30 minutes, our image is done being exposed. We can take this back to the work area and develop it. Removing the negative, we see a ghostly appearance of an image. To develop, we place the paper into a 10% solution of potassium ferric cyanide. This forms a uranium ferrocyanide complex that is insoluble in water. The different oxidation states create the different color tones. The more exposed area, the darker the area. Once the desired color tone is reached, the paper is then transferred to a stop bath. A stop bath is a washing bath with a few drops of glacial acetic acid added. The acid stops the developer from working, and the water pulls over leftover developer. It is essential to use a bath and not run water over it. Water will create blotches of washed away regions. Once developed and washed, it is hung back up to dry. Here is our final image of this run and it turned out quite well. If you're wondering what the picture is of, it's a hunk of uranium metal. It's a picture of uranium using uranium. Ironic, is it not? 
The dichromic contrast agent did its job very well. Without the contrasting agent, you can barely make out the image. I did another run where I made my logo guy, me wearing a gas mask and a civil defense helmet, and that one turned out superbly. I think it's the best one out of all the runs. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again. Check out my science discord server, we discuss a wide variety of scientific concepts there. don't know, but I've been told uranium ore is worth more than gold. I sold my cad, I bought me a jeep, I got that bug and I can't sleep. Uranium fever has gone and got me down. Uranium fever is spreading all.